Hello. This caricature is of Guy Williams, and I'm drawing it for the traditional caricature contest on Facebook. And uh, that's what we're drawing this week. And um, I had a lot of fun with this one. I, I used watercolor on construction paper, and I'll get into what happened at the end. But um, or as as the video goes, I'll just let you know. But I, there was tons of mistakes, and uh, I learned a lot of different things from those mistakes. Uh, and you'll you'll get to see and hopefully learn a little bit um, as we go through it. Um, let me see. So uh, Guy Williams, um, I I learned he plays the Zorro in the Disney movie, or it's like a TV show really. And uh, I guess that's what he's most known for. So I decided to draw him in that outfit or in that um, Zorro theme. So I have, I'm going to be drawing his mask in a little bit, and I got his sword. And the sword will be bending like he normally does and stuff. Uh, so right now I'm just trying to figure out um, uh, how I'm going to draw his face. That's probably most important. So I'm, I'm, uh, I've got a few different pictures. I'm watching a video of him. I got it on repeat. Uh, I'm just playing it over and over on YouTube. But um, I'm, I'm going through a few things. I, I tried the profile since I feel more comfortable and um but it just it wasn't working out so i eventually started doing the full face um i'm trying to figure out how to draw his mouth and uh he, he's a real clean cut guy so i didn't want to like um make him look like a monster or anything so i just kind of wanted to exaggerate his features there he has a lot of sharp angles uh so there's a few different there's a lot of different ways you can draw him but um i didn't want to draw him with that many angles i wanted to to keep this one kind of clean, clean cut and simple. So you see how the overall shape of that one? That's a thumbnail that basically I'm gonna go through go with. And it's almost like a shoe or a boot. So it's kind of straight up towards the forehead, it goes straight down. And then you have like this um in the jaw, you have the heel of the boot, and then you have the chin. Now it just I wasn't thinking about a boot. That's just how it came out. Um but that's basically, that's the overall shape I'm going to go with. And then from that, as you see, I'm adding the mouth. I'm trying to figure out where the eyes go. Um, you know, where I could add more things that will add more likeness to, you know, more features and different things. Um, so I'm going to, uh, just a little heads up, I'm going to be sketching that thumbnail with the mask you saw me draw there. I'm going to be sketching that one. Um, on like a, a larger sheet, it might be like 10 by 10. And as I was transferring that or drawing it on the 10 by 10, it, it just, I didn't like it. So there I am, you'll see, I'm, I'm starting to sketch it and I'm, I'm just kind of trying to draw what I, I sketch and I, I'm just not liking the overall thing. And uh, no, there's just something missing I, I noticed and I'm just, I'm not sure what it is. And I just didn't want to continue drawing it. Um, so I just I just gave up. I kind of stopped, and I went back to thumbnail. So there I am doing thumbnails again. I'm trying to figure out what it was, and there was a few things. It was the position of the eyes, and then the second thing was the forehead. Like um, I had it going inward, and that area, especially with this forehead and this cheekbone, that all that area, it's kind of it goes outward. It's it, it pushes out. It's towards the skull. Like it goes outward. It doesn't push inward. And towards this inside the skull it goes outward so that was I guess the main problem um, so I went ahead and figured that out and then I went back to um, the page I just flipped the page over um, so let me show you there there I go I flipped it now I'm gonna just uh, resketch the second thumbnail and you see how the forehead now it, it, it bulges outward and I went ahead and connected that same line with the teeth I try to do stuff like that. You see the forehead, and it goes. If you draw a straight line down, it goes. It's 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 the same line for the teeth, and then if you notice the nose, it, the nose is the same line for the outside of the jaw, and just a lot of things. I try to connect it that way because there's so much, so many exaggerations and things that are kind of out of place. You kind of have to, I think. Uh, this is what I think. Uh, you kind of have to. There I was experimenting with the jaw and the cheek there. And then I erased it, but you kind of have to do those things just to kind of balance it out, I think, uh, because there's so many things that are kind of out of place already. And, and um, you know, when you when you do things like that, it, I guess it kind of helps the overall uh, feel of it. 
it, it makes it more at least you know from a caricature standpoint it makes it look more balanced I think so I don't know but I try to connect as many lines as I can you know when they're around the same area or shape or whatnot I just try to connect them uh, so there's a close-up view of what I'm doing with the eyes so as, as I'm drawing the eyes um, and everything else I'm, I'm always editing I'm always changing and, and you know there I am doing the eyebrows over I might do the, the all the features I might do them all over again a few times on the on the um, larger sheet so I do them at least two or three times each feature I'll edit it now it's not a, a major edit um, I, I, I still stick to the thumbnail the things that I have on the thumbnail but uh, I do edit like the very small things like the eyes you see I made them smaller um, you know so things like that I, I'm always constantly editing um, I added like the, the cheekbone there and the mask um, I'm just changing up a lot of different things and I hope it brings a little bit more likeness and um, so I'm adding a few wrinkles now the the wrinkles the if you see the picture on the bottom of the video he, he's got about two two large wrinkles in his forehead and uh, I only did one um, usually if you add more lines to the the person's face the older they look and um, I just didn't want him to look too old so I just added one line uh, one wrinkle in his forehead um, so that's 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 one of the things that one of the rules that I guess we've kind of learned so the less lines you add onto a face, the younger the person looks. So if you're drawing a caricature and it, the person's looking too young or too old, just follow that theory and it, it should work out. It's probably because you have too many lines. Um, usually when I was at a theme park, if I was drawing like a teenager, I made him look 30 or 40 and the, the, the mom or so would say, hey, you, you made my kid look too old or whatnot. And I couldn't figure it out why, but it was basically because there was too many lines. So I, I just, you know, for kids, I just draw a few dots in the nose, especially if they're really young. I don't actually draw the whole, all those features that go on in the nose uh, because of that theory. So anyways, uh, I added his dimple, um, a few different things, you know, the teeth. Um, his, his teeth aren't like straight, straight across. I mean, they're, they're straight, but they look kind of jagged. Um, on the ends of them so I just made him kind of choppy I made him kind of not sharp like a shark but I just kind of made a little bit of a gap in between them that was just the way I drew it so it can look that way because his teeth aren't like perfectly straight on the bottom um, let me see here I'm drawing the bandana forgive me I haven't I didn't take any notes today I did a lot of work on this one I wasn't I wasn't prepared it's, it's 1 a.m. over here, and um, let's see. I like staying up drawing. I do at least once a week. I, I do these things to practice, so I really enjoy drawing uh, for the group, and I learn a lot from everyone on there. Um, let me see. So there I am. I'm trying to figure out now how to do the mouth. See, the mouth, it, it really doesn't make sense, like the mouth, like the top lip. It kind of goes around, but that's the fun thing. I, I like doing stuff like that. It's just fun, and um you know i i just i like doing stuff like that all right i'm about to do some water coloring here and this is what i'm looking at at the moment i have the zoro sun i'm going to um like incorporate somewhere on the bottom and i have these other uh, close-ups of him like with the skin tones and i got this one with this color um then I have, that's what I'm going to be doing with the background. Um, one good thing is that, you know, with the, like, photographers and all the movie people, they kind of set the stage. So I kind of piggyback off what they, their ideas in regards to, like, backgrounds and stuff. So I kind of leave it to, I guess, the professionals and then just kind of, like, exaggerate that. So uh, what I mean by that is I, I, like, for example, this, the directors and all the, you know, the people who made the film, Zorro, they figured out, you know, they, they thought this would be the best mood, best background stuff uh, that would, would show off, you know, Zorro or the feeling of, of uh, what they wanted to portray. So what I did, just I'm just going to copy try to copy that um, onto here. I'm going to be doing it like in the background area. I'm going to try at least. Um, 
So I'm just kind of taking their idea and just kind of exaggerating that. Uh, I'll exaggerate as much as I can on the colors and stuff, but um, that's what I'm going to be using as a background. And um, I don't think I can incorporate the horse, but I don't know. But um, that's going to be the color shot that I use. Um, so just thought I'd share. So now I'm watercoloring, and I add, um, as you can see, a light, a light layer of purple first. Um, the colors are a little bit brighter in person, but in the video, it's it just might seem a little lighter. But uh, it's still a light wash, and I'm starting off with the purple. Uh, no real reason. It's just I, I just I kind of see purple when I'm looking at the the person. I just kind of see purple behind all his flesh. And sometimes when you when you're doing coloring, you have to kind of look deep or look look deep inside their skin, and you'll see like you just don't see brown and stuff and pink. You'll see other colors. You'll see like yellow. Sometimes you'll see green and blue and all all these weird colors, but you have to kind of look hard. Um, this is the kind of things that they teach you like in art class and stuff. But I'm not I'm sure there's a name for it. But there's just tons of colors in the skin. If you look at your arm like the veins and, and stuff like that. There's always greens and yellows and there's always all types of colors going on in the skin. It's not just like beige or brown or things like that. There's, it's, it's, it's more deep than that. So um, anyways, there's tons of other colors that I'm adding and I'm, I'm going to be doing different layers and then erasing. Um, I was pretty excited today. I, I got to warm up in the beginning. Um, I, I was going through the Beasted book the actual the, the big large beasted book I purchased it from Nate and it was it was great it was wonderful there's there's just tons of good stuff in there I didn't even get halfway through it but there's just there's just a lot of stuff in there a lot of funny things too that he shares that has that have happened to him like at events and stuff um, or when he's drawing drawing caricatures for people but anyways but uh, I, I got to you just kind of skim through it look at his thumbnails and Look at his overall coloring and all the different things that he does. Uh, I was very inspired, so I was I, that was that was kind of like my warm up before I did any thumbnails. So that I was able to go through that, and it was it was a great help. It was really good. I I would highly recommend you get that book. So there's two of them. There's like the small one, the Beasted Mini, and that's the one I carried like in my easel um, before an event. I'll, I'll flip through it and stuff all the time. Um, and then there's the the big beasted book which I barely got so um, anyways what you didn't see is I did some watercoloring in the background I it was really bad uh, I don't know why I just it just wasn't able to show it um, maybe the I wish I did so that way you can see how bad it was it was really really bad it looked like a rainbow there was blues and greens and yellows and just it was just crazy anyways I it didn't work out very well, so I cut out the caricature. I cut it out. And that was probably the hardest thing that I've ever done. Uh, I got the X-Acto knife and the you know the scissors, and my fingers were hurting, and I cut out every single corner and thing, and it was just a mess. Anyways, I, I put it behind a construction paper, and I was just going to put it on a flat color, like a yellow or orange, and then I just something popped in my brain, and... I thought, well, maybe I can tear it and then add that background. So there I am. Uh, it's two construction sheets. You got yellow and then you have the orange one in the back. And then I was going to draw the sword. I was going to draw it with like a black marker. I just got really lazy. And I started thinking about like a wire. So I went in the garage and got this little flag wire that I got. Uh, I bought it a long time ago. Anyways, I bent it and stuck it on there. And then I kind of raised up the... The wire, you'll you'll see in a little bit. Um, when I took a picture, I wanted to show like a shadow on the wire, so I got a maybe a one inch piece of my mechanical pencil, and I stuck it behind the wire near the hair where that little curl is at on the left side. I stuck a little piece of mechanical pencil so that the wire will be raised up from the page, and then the, the so that way you can see the shadow. So you'll be able to see that in the next, uh, towards the end of the video. So anyways, uh, here it goes and hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.